rate the teams from the Hurling League this year. So this isn't going to be overly easy. And we're, we're going to rate Kilkenny and Clare, even though the final hasn't happened just yet. But you can see here on screen, that's the list of all the teams. And, you know, we currently have A in for all of them, but that's going to change very, very quickly. <laughs> Let's start off with Limerick. So I'll just give you an overview of how their league went. They finished top of the group stages with four wins from uh, four wins from five and a draw. And then obviously they went out against Kilkenny and it wasn't particularly pretty. They lost by 317 to 115 after going 1-2 to naught ahead. So considering what John Kiley would have had to negotiate this year, which was the situation with Kyle Hayes, of course. So that certainly wasn't ideal. But between the verdict and the sentencing, they threw him back into the picture which meant that they, they, they went through a full month of huge scrutiny around him. As soon as you played him, that basically offers this topic up for conversation, for questioning in post-match, which he had to go through relentlessly, which I would have thought would have been very, very tough for him. And maybe somewhat that scrutiny contributed to the loss to Kilkenny. But they were really, really good for the most part in the round-robin games. They beat Antrim, they beat Westmead without too much fuss. They beat Tipperary. Uh, they hammered Dublin, obviously, that time. They beat Tipperary, and then they drew with Galway, picked up a couple of injuries along the way, and then, no matter what way you slice it, no team wants to finish their league losing in the manner they lost. So how are you looking at rating them here? I'm probably looking at a C, but I'm not sure what type of a C. Um, I'd probably look at the group stages, and they did what they, ha they had to do. Um, we're undefeated throughout the group stages, but they picked up a loss in the, in the semi-final the, the like of which they probably haven't had in a while. I think Cork bet them by nine in the 2022 league. Now it's funny, like I don't. I I was looking back to stats on Limerick, and I don't even remember that Cork game in the league. I when I when I looked at it, I was like, I had to look at it a couple of times. Like, oh, I kind of remember that game actually. You just don't remember it because it didn't amount to a hill of beans in the grand in the grander scheme of things. I wonder will that be the same with the semi final? Talking them training hard on the Saturday. They were obviously going out to Quinta de Laga, I think, a couple of days later. Maybe in the back of the heads, they were kind of thinking, do we need to be playing Clare, uh, who were playing the first round of Munster, or do we need to be playing Tipperary, who were playing the second round of Munster? I'd probably be looking at a C, probably a straight C, I'd say. I'm going to say a C plus just because the, the manner of their victories against Dublin and against Tipperary. And even though, like, for 40 minutes, didn't they have 14 men against Galway? Oh, wait, I've put it as Clare there, but I meant to put it as Limerick. Um, yeah, listen, maybe so. Maybe I'm maybe I'm kind of a bit, a bit harsh. It's just I'm, uh, there is a fair bit of stock in that semi-final. Something happened to them that hasn't happened, that's been really, uh, just hasn't happened under, under Kylie generally from 2018 onwards. But I'm, I'm okay with a C+. Plus. Okay, Richard Hogan says C is a bit low for Limerick. And could you just tell us on what basis, Richard? Because we'd be interested to get your feedback on that. Like, they haven't lit it up or anything either. Like they, they beat all the teams that they were probably expected to beat. Drew at Galway, obviously, with 14, and then ended the league on a bit of a sour note. Like, it, listen, if they'd exited after the group stages or that, and that, they'd probably be, you know, a solid, a solid B. But there's that little kind of question mark going into the championship now after the way they performed in their last game. Yeah, okay. Um, Clare, I suppose, look, they've been unbeaten so far. Probably the, the only, they're actually the only team that's unbeaten at this stage. They came through a group with, Top the group, I should say, with Kilkenny, Cork, Wexford, Watford, Offaly, which is certainly the harder of the two groups. And then they bossed Tipperary for long spells of the semi final. And look, we can we can talk about Tipperary's performance and they weren't great and all that kind of stuff. But I'd say up to now, obviously, we're not going to include the, the league final because we haven't seen it. To do all of this without Tony Kelly, without Shane O'Donnell, without Ryan Taylor, and David McInerney didn't play against Tipperary, I think you have to say it's an A when you consider all the young players that they've been blooding. Yeah, I would definitely go along with it, A. Like, we didn't know much about Conor Lean or Keith Smith or a couple of handful more lads before this league really started. And they've given all signs to suggest that uh, that the future is fairly bright in, in Clare, you'd have to say. And they've gotten to a league final, as you say, minus the lads that they're, that they're down. Like, what's the, what's the league about? Getting game time into lads before championship and experimenting and blooding new players. They've done that spectacularly well, you'd have to say, so... I'd probably yeah. give them a. I'd probably give them a straight up A. It probably it'd be an A plus probably if they if they win the league. Um, but they haven't really put a foot wrong, and they've won a lot of tight games. Um, as well. So yeah, no, I think it's been really really impressive from a, from a Clare point of view so far. 
Yeah, Tromspieler says Limerick A minus, only minus for them is a flat second half in the semi final. The rest of the league they coasted and brought through O'Dolig O'Neill, English nicely, Limerick prime for championship. Liam Mako one says Limerick haven't really developed anybody either because uh, besides Cahill O'Neill at wing back, John Bowles says that they're C in terms of their own standard. P well 74 throws in Fergal O'Connor, Adam English, and O'Dolig all played well for Limerick and now they're viable options for championship. The one thing for Clare that could backfire somewhat is ha having to play this league final so close to championship so look we'll see if if ultimately we're gonna uh, view this as an a when we look back later in the year okay galway they finished third in division one group b so the matches they played start off with a thumping win over westmead then they were beaten by tipperary and at times looked very second best in that game but still in all kept tipperary scoreless for long spells and brought back close then they went and pummeled Antrim, that was 235 to 113. Beat Dublin soundly enough by eight points over in Pierce Stadium. Uh, had a couple of red cards there. And then 17 points apiece against Limerick. And really sold it into Limerick, but couldn't beat them, even though Limerick were minus Shane O'Brien for long, long spells after a red card. Yeah, that's, uh, listen, sure, they've kind of mixed the good with the bad. Um, you have, to, realistically, you, you probably have to be beating Limerick when they're down, when they're down a player for so long. I just saw parts of that Tipperary game where I thought they were kind of bossed at different stages. Now they got themselves back into it as well. Um, I, and even in the closing minutes against Limerick, they were able to push uh, and get, at least get something out of the game. But why do they always have to be in uh, a negative position, we'll say, for them to get a real kind of reaction or for, the, for us to see their best side? Um, do we know who's going to play three in championship? Do we know who's going to play six? Do, are we sure who's going to play midfield? Uh, where's Keenan Fatty fitting into the mix? I'd have as many questions as answers about Galway after the league, and it'd be somewhere around the C for me. Yeah, would it be more C minus because we just don't know? We just don't know. Like we're not any closer to the championship team that we're totally convinced about. Yeah, we're we're no we're no closer to knowing what way they're going to be playing at all, really. Um, yeah. And some would some would say that that that's good in a way because. Um, there's lots of lads fighting for different spots, but I'd much prefer to be of, I'd much prefer to be of the Limerick variety where you have a fair idea for 13 of the spots where, where lads are going to be and it's solid and lads have played alongside each other um and they know they know their know their role basically. Now I'd have yeah, a good bit of doubts. Can they turn it on come summer? Definitely can, but it definitely it was a league where they did not light it up. So C minus is good with me. Mm, okay, well, look, Wexford, they had three draws, a win and a loss. But they've had a huge amount of injury issues. Now, Keith Roster is in his first year. So what has he found from his team among the games of drawn with Kilkenny, 216 apiece, drawn with Wexford, that was twenty or awfully one that was 117 to 20 points, drawn with Clare, that was 113 to 16, beaten Watford down there, 223 to 123, and then been beaten handily enough by Cork 321 to 115. Bit of a bruising defeat there. So what will Keith Roster take from that league? And how do we rate it? Yeah, I think you take a lot. You look outside of that Cork game, look at all the new players that have got into the mix, like Sir Richie Lawler, Keen Byrne, uh, Connor Foley. Connor Hearn's not necessarily new, but they've gotten um these boys have you know, they've kind of swam, especially without Lee Chin. Chin went off after went off early against Clare that day, and they're still able to put up a huge score. It finished in a disappointment uh, against Cork, as I said. But like I'd say, Wexford folk would be a good bit happier with what things are going to be like in four or five years when a lot of the elder statesmen step away with what they saw in the league. Um, I was I liked the way they play too. Um, I thought they were I thought they were good in the eye in the games that I saw. Um, less. Uh, less handcuffed by tactics, I would say. That's not to say that they're not kind of tight at the back or anything. They still are relatively tight. But I thought it was a it was better on the eye than maybe it has been for for the last couple of years. I'd be having them in around the B category, Shane. Like they drew it, they drew with Clare, um, they drew with Kilkenny, they beat oh. Waterford down in Waterford, drew it awfully as well. Obviously that Cork game, they were probably well well beaten in that. Um, again, minus a fair few of their big hitters, probably given. Mm, probably like a B minus or something like that, maybe B but slash B minus. Trump Spieler says, I heard that some of the older heads begged Johnny Glynn to come back in this week. Oh, they should have been uh, on their hands and knees to get Joe Canning back. K 
Canning's still the best club hurler in Galway. Says, uh, uh, Cyril, Cyril has always been adamant about that. And he said, if, 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 like, if they're looking at anybody for a role for 15 or 20 minutes off the bench, they, that they should not be looking further than Canning and that they should be moving hell and high water to get him back. Like, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But um, be Would he want to, see. to do that? Would he want to be a sub and come on? Ah, uh, probably not. And it's not even. It's Grant saying if you could, if you could be teleported um to Central Stadium or Crow Park to come on for those last twenty minutes, it's grand. But it's everything you have to do to get to that position. And I'd say once you're out of that and checked out of that, your life kind of moves on, like doesn't it? And you're you're not making maybe the same sacrifices that you were. And there's probably some relief in that as well. I'd say. Yeah, Harburn talk about Wexford. They're B, brought in lots of new lads, competed well, but don't know our best team before the biggest game of the championship, and that is the first round clash against Dublin on April the 21st. Aidan McGrath adds, Wexford would have been an A before the Cork game, afterwards back to a C, because that was the first uh, game carrying expectation against the top team, and they folded. I'm going to say it's a C plus. Now, I make that argument on the basis that it was all looking good, and like Adrian says there, it was ramped up a little bit against Cork, but now things are looking a little bit shaky after the manner of that defeat, especially at home and not knowing your team for the championship. Yeah, it was an unusual one because um, I know Westmead beat them in Wexford Park last year, but they've generally been, they've generally saved their best performances for there and it's it's unlike them to kind of deliver that type of flat performance there. Uh, I'm okay with a C plus. It would be a, a negative B or a C plus, so I'm okay with C plus. Okay, do you want to make the case for Waterford? Well, <laughs> depends what type of case you want. You want made like if you're looking, if you're looking at their league uh, overall, they're obviously um, beaten by Cork narrowly enough, uh, beaten by Wexford narrowly enough. Be what be awfully the first day out, uh, got a couple of goals that day, took advantage of maybe awfully going down to to fourteen men. What are the other two games in there? Um, yeah, so I I was sort of looking at some of the comments there, but yeah, so that their run this year so far is uh, Waterford beat. Awfully, you went down to 14 men that day, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and you kind of capitulated a little bit. So won that game handily enough, won it by 12 points, then lost by one to Clare, then lost by two to Cork after going 10 behind, but played quite well in the last few minutes, then lost by a goal to Wexford, and then scored 2-9 against Kilkenny's 18 points. Yeah, um, I would say I would say it was a fairly underwhelming um, league campaign overall. They weren't beaten by much in any of those games. So to me, like a lot of it is just about how they're playing. Like they're not playing particularly well, or they're not particularly good on the eye. They're not really like what what really excited me a couple of years ago. This real kind of swashbuckling style. Not that they were all out attack, but you kind of felt like if they got the ball anywhere, that they could force, they could nearly work a goal, and there was massive pace and massive energy. Um, now, there's obviously the caveat of Stephen Bennett picked up an injury in one of the games in Walsh Park. I think it was against Clare, first round of the league, actually, was it nearly, or second round of the league, and he didn't play another minute. Caelan Lyons is back, which is obviously a big boost. Desi Hutchinson came back in the last couple of games um, and showed that his eye is still well in. They were missing plenty of players, but again, that's no guarantee that lads are going to come back and be hopping come championship. Same same with Wexford. Um, God, I'd, I'd be looking at it. I'd be looking at a low C or like a D plus, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, like, who have they really developed? That That's the question, like, I just don't know who they've developed. They've a huge amount of injuries, and look, everyone seems to have a huge amount of injuries. But I don't like watching them. I'm not sure what they're doing. Austin Gleeson stepping away—that that never is a positive sign. Stephen Bennett, like his injury was. You just don't know what way are they going to set up this year, co coming away from that league. Like it was just really frustrating to watch them. And I did a video on the Patreon talking just showing basically the way Wexford were able to walk up the pitch at times and Paddy Levy was sort of marking space but nobody's getting pressure on out the field like he's marking it back the field but that only works if someone is getting pressure at the other end and I just came away from it wondering what are they doing with the puck outs what are they doing with the players that they're playing inside when there's someone inside how often are they doing short puck outs to to their full back line which are all the way out in the 45 and I I just don't know yeah, I just I just don't see where the positivity is going to come from. Maybe it will. Maybe they'll shock us. But I don't know. I think like C minus at best. 
Oh, I think we're probably been generous with C minus. I'd say, yeah. I'd, I'd say maybe like a D plus or a straight up D maybe or something like that. Now I've I've heard um the mood music wasn't particularly good um when they when they went off to, to Portugal for their training camp, but I heard they had a very productive week over there and they came back bouncing from from what I'm hearing anyway. Um, and maybe there'll be something. There's going to have to be something that first day out uh, against Cork because if they lose that game. They're under big pressure. They're under big pressure to get any points on the board. It's saying Munster if they lose that game, uh, so that's going to be fascinating. It's just all teed up. It's like it's so much on the line that first weekend between Limerick and, and Clare, and obviously between uh, between Cork and Watford as well. Um, I'd probably go, I'd probably go D plus maybe or something like that. Yeah, Park Ryan says Watford's great absence for Test Traumspieler Watford failed the mocks. Remind me of a lad who had prepared bowling for poetry but never came up. <laughs> Do you remember when it used to be like back in the day, the, the word always went around that like, you know, you got like ten percent for writing your name in an exam and <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> so uh, we're moving on then to Cork, and if you were to go on the first twenty-five minutes of that game against. Um, Kilkenny, you'd be saying a straight up F here, but obviously they haven't been quite so bad ever since. But um, what are you thinking about Cork? I'm kind of thinking that they came good probably when it really mattered. Um, not necessarily came good, but they finished the league with a bit of a flourish. They weren't like terrible up until that point. They were just a bit of that Jekyll and Hyde Cork that we've come to know in, in recent years. Um, I just something has it in the back of my head that they got what they wanted out of the league. They're in Division One A next year. Didn't start particularly well. Um, there was a you know a bit of negativity about you know maybe the first twenty five minutes against Kilkenny, uh, a bit of a fade out against Waterford, letting them back into the game. But I think they got what they wanted out of the league. They've never really gone hard at the league. Um, and you're expecting I'm expecting a hop come championship. Got Alan Connolly back onto the pitch, fit and healthy. Back to back hat tricks, which is which is huge. Um, looking like they're gonna have most of their front line men available to them come summer, which is what you want. Whereas other other counties don't necessarily have that. Um, did they light it up in the league? No, but there's that element that there's something coming, or I feel like there's something coming. It's probably like. Um, but do they know? Like, who who have they developed this year? Who's the new player? And I know Ben Cunningham was injured, so that obviously. Uh, means that he ha doesn't have a chance to really show his wares. Owen Downey we had seen last year, but he's probably coming on a bit more, as is his brother, who seems to be improving all the time. Tommy O'Connell, yeah, okay, he's really stepping up again this year. But are they really bringing through any of these players where you're thinking now, okay, they're ready to take that extra step this year? No, we haven't seen any yet. Uh, ben Cunningham was probably the one, um, but he was kind of... Hampered, Mullins, but he, maybe? Ham yeah, but... Like how many, how much game time have these lads re really got to suggest where they're they're going to start come summer? Like, and there's probably there's a fair element of you know Galway to them in the sense of do we know who's going to be playing uh, three? We do know who's going to be playing six. That's the one kind of saving grace that they have, and they have one of the best centre backs in the country in uh, in Kieran Joyce. But uh, they're still probably going to be relying on Hoggy and Seamus Harnity up front with Alan Connolly potentially thrown in. We're not a hundred percent sure of uh, Robbie O'Flynn's kind of fitness at the minute. I think he's crucial to their cause. Do, do we uh, do we know where Tim O'Matley's going to be playing? No, no, no. So like, there's a there's a lot of players going into a pot there. Um, do we know where they're going to come out playing? Prob probably not. I just it's more of a sense or a good feeling that I kind of feel like there's they're going to produce something or something might be brewing. Um, but it's still like a it's a C or something like that, I'd say, from the league. Did we, did we learn much about them? Very, very little. Maybe that's the way they wanted it. Yeah, I, yeah. It, if they had to bring through one or two more players, I'd say fair enough. Uh, Cork realistically have 25 players that could start a championship game. So hard to pick their starting 15. To be fair, they do have great depth, and we went through that in recent times. The amount of forwards they have is nuts. Um, Tipperary, okay, right. So this is always easy for me to pick. You go through the some of the league performances, and at times you're thinking, okay, tip her back. But if I'm to move away from that exaggeration somewhat, first day out against Dublin, very good, 227 to 22 points. Next day out against Galway, at times really, really excellent, and at other times worrying, like how they went long spells without scoring. And the likes of Garrod O'Connor was playing brilliantly back then towards the tail end of the league. You're thinking... You know, maybe played too many games, see a little bit kind of running on empty, not entirely sure. Then beat uh, Westmead, 
unimpressive that day, but it was a very much changed team against Limerick. I would say, even though came back late on and got a couple of scores to take the bad look off the scoreline, which is good to stay going all the way till the very end against them, probably failed that test a little bit. Still think it's good to play that game just to get more used to them, but failed that test somewhat. And then, you know, won in Antrim and then the semi final against Clare. Solid, useless, really. You know, and I mean, a lot of that was, I was very worried about the puck out setup going, going both ways. But I don't feel that it'll be as bad as that in Championship because we've seen Liam Cahill teams and Michael Beaven teams set up very well for puck outs in other games. But also, obviously, the amount of missed frees and missed shots in general was quite worrying. So I think you'd have to say it's probably a C at best for Tipperary. Yeah, I would have said probably probably C minus, I'd say. Um the mix there was there was definitely some good um at stages against Galway, um at stages against Dublin as well. Um I suppose they could have been beaten by eight or nine, maybe against Limerick. They weren't. It just uh, they, like there was a bad there was a bad look to that Clare game. Um and now all of a sudden from being like maybe a, a B before the before the Clare game, or you know, maybe a, a B minus or something like that. There's a good few doubts going into into championship now about them. But there was still I think there was still enough couple of there was enough bright spots for them to be probably um uh, what did I say there? Probably like a C C minus C minus probably something like that maybe because there are there's just question marks now that less of which there were maybe before that semi final against Clare. There's there was some there was some good but there was plenty of kind of bad in there as well and plenty of doubts now um that they're going to have to rectify fairly quickly too. Yeah, and the reason that you'd have Cork as a C and Tip as a C minus, they both had like bad performances at times. Like Cork's twenty five minutes against Kilkenny was shocking. But it was at it was so far ago now that it doesn't feel as relevant, whereas Tipperary's worst performance was their most recent one. So that's why what, it's going to what, stick what, in the worrying mind. thing as well is uh, they were talking about teams that don't know who's playing where. We probably still don't know really who's playing six for Limerick uh, or for Tipperary, I should say. And that's worrying. Um, that's definitely worrying to me. That's three and six are are probably the two that you have to have nailed down going into the summer. Um, and it's the same. It's the same probably worry maybe that that Limerick have even at this stage as well with Dan Morrissey potentially out and Declan Hannan only coming back and not looking like himself and Sean Finn not looking like himself as well and Mike Casey missing the last day. So, but from Limerick from Tipperary's point of view, yeah, you're just not sure who's going to be playing six, and that's that's something that they need to rectify. Yeah, um, Dublin's performances in the league. I mean, losing to Tipperary by what was that eleven points? Then the game, like stole a result against Antrim thanks to a goalkeeping mistake. Lost to Limerick by what was it, eighteen points? Lost to Galway by eight points. Beat Westmead, fair enough, and very commanding display that day. But God, it's probably a D plus, really. Yeah, the plus is probably generous. I'd say really. Um... Because yeah, as you say, they were they were they were half steep that day up in Corrigan Park to get a result um, for the second. Stick with a D, so I think I think a, I think a straight up D. Like again, I kind of mentioned this a couple of times. It looks like Donahue's first year as opposed to his second year because we we you know what what's, what what were the bright spots? Probably Brian Hayes, I'd say, was one of the bright spots throughout the league. But Owen O'Donnell was missing. He's had no game time since the 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 Walsh Cup, really. Chris Crummy's not, not not long back. It looks like they're going to play him at six, which is you know going to be a fair departure for him to come in at six, having not played county for for two years. Um, Donald Burke Lyons come back in to be fair. Donald Burke yeah. will only get sharper. Yeah, Donald Burke coming back is a, obviously a massive massive plus. Um, listen, what was the game they circled in the calendar? Wexford in the first round of Leinster. That's the game that will ultimately define what way their season goes, whether they qualify from Leinster probably or whether they don't. Um, but it was it wasn't a good league. Um, it was not a good league. Yeah. Okay. Then awfully you finished bottom of Division One Group A, lost by twelve points to Waterford the first. Was it tw- was it twelve? Yeah, I thought it was seven. Uh, three twenty to seventeen points. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. I got mixed up. Stay going. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Drew with Wexford then um, were up by six points on Kilkenny, but ultimately lost by seven. 528 to 16 against Cork and really kind of capitulated towards the very end when Cork started piling on the goals and then lost by a point to a much changed Clare team. And we're in good position to win that game. So. I mean, you, you'd know better than I, based on what you would have wanted before the start of the league and the blooding of players. Where yeah, we but based on what you, what you would have wanted and what you would have expected, I would have expected 
I put it this way, I would have expected a couple of beatdowns, and that's just been honest, because you're going into Division 1, the last time they were in Division 1, um, I remember Cork eviscerated them in, in Brendan's Park, and that was amongst, that was, I think I think they were beaten all ends up in all five of their games um, that year, that was 2022, I think. Whereas this time around, we showed plenty of signs that we can be competitive on a given day. Will we be competitive every day? No. But in time, potentially, we will be, probably should have beaten Wexford, um, probably should have beaten a much changed Clare team as well and had a very good half against Kilkenny. Now, I would have been enthused by what I saw in the league now, I have to say, particularly with, like, uh, Cottle King got game time, Dan Burke got game time, Adam Screeny, Dan Ravenhill, all these boys got game time, Mark Troy and goals, um, Donald Shirley got game time, like, lads that wouldn't have first time exposed to senior hurling and didn't look out of place. Um, I honestly, I'd probably be giving them a, like a solid C or maybe even a C plus because based on what I was expecting, um, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't, I wasn't expecting probably what we got. Being honest with you, and it was quite heartening to see what we got. Okay, I'll, I'll promote that from a, a C minus to a C plus. Westmead, then, do you know what? Westmead had a had a pretty tall order in terms of the the group they were in. Um, obviously, you you have a game against Antrim, which they would have fancied, and also against Dublin. Ultimately, they won one of their four games. First day out, we've said this so many times about how Galway fill a teams, and it was unmerciful, 431 to 14 points. So to start like that, but then go out the next day and push Limerick, and I, obviously Limerick had made some changes, but they've serious depth in that squad. And they, I think they had a level after about 64 minutes or something like that. It was, it was very tight anyway. They lost by six for a finish. Then Tipperary, they were quite close for long spells and Tip pulled away. Then they beat Antrim by six. And the game against Dublin, they were certainly second best, even when they had 15 men apiece. But ultimately, Aaron Craig got sent off after 33 minutes, and that was all she wrote. Overall, I'm, I'm kind of torn a little bit on this one. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably still be looking at something in around the C area, Shannon. I think like, so, yeah. Yeah, because like, like they mixed it with some of the big boys and mixed it very well. Won the, won the game against Antrim, the one, that, the, the one game they would have really been ex- expecting to win. Um, probably would be a little bit higher had they been, uh, had they delivered probably a better performance against Dublin. But to react the way they did to that filleting against Galway, I think is very, very encouraging. Um, I'd mm. have to say the three games in the middle were very good. Um, they bookended either end by a very bad performance the first day and an average performance the last day against Dublin. But what, what happened in the middle, I think, was was pretty good. And similar to Offaly, like you can't just judge them on the Galway game or you can't really judge them on the Dublin game because um, there were plenty of bright spots in there. I'd probably give them, probably give them a C, I'd say. Mm, okay. Um, we'll move on then to Antrim. Yeah, it was a tough it was a tough campaign for Antrim. There's no point in saying any, any different. Um that Dublin game was the one was the one they left behind. It, maybe their campaign would have been a bit different had they got a, res, a result up there. Would have left them in a different position going in playing Westmead as well because they would have already had potentially two points on the board or at least one on the board. Um, but like it, it probably it wasn't a good it wasn't a good league campaign. There's no point in saying any different. Now it's been there's been a nice little boost with the fact that. Uh, Keelan Malloy and Sean Elliott, Ryan Elliott and co are coming back on board for the championship. But I wouldn't have said it was a, a particularly good league campaign and I'd probably have them down in the D category. Yeah, but I suppose you don't want to be too harsh on any one player, but they did convert a goalkeeper to, sorry, an outfielder into a goalkeeper. And that definitely had a huge bearing on the result against Dublin, but also the, a couple, the two goals that they conceded against Westmead. So you could have been looking at a couple of wins there. And now that they have those players, you mentioned Akeelah Malloy, Nigel Elliott, Sean Elliott, Ryan Elliott, but also uh, Sean McKay of Cushion Dunn, he's back, or he's involved, Cormac McKeown of Glen Ravel, and Niall McGarrell of Glen Arm, and Rory McCormick of Loch Giel. They have bolstered the panel a nice bit. And you could make the case that, well, that's not the league. We're reviewing the league. Here. I'd make that case. <laughs> yeah, so in terms of the complexion. But what I'm saying is they have their goalkeeper back now. And you could say that throwing an outfielder into goals changed the complexion of how that league was. And maybe we're looking at a false sense of where things are at. Maybe, but we're, you can only look at what, you're, what, what we saw, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, and you can kind of take all the little caveats into it as well. But 
And it's also like, it's far from a foregone conclusion that all those lads that were missing for the whole of the league are going to come, come back in and it's all going to be sunshine and roses. Far, far from it. Like, they're facing the same dilemma that most other counties are facing with lads that didn't play league or were carrying knocks or whatever. Don't really know what they were doing in the background. Uh, and maybe they've been tipping away the whole way and they'll be at a nice pitch coming into the summer. But uh, I, I, I'd only be judging on what I saw. And I think a D is, a D is more than fair. Okay, and then Kilkenny. Um, sure, they were very good the first day against Cork for the first twenty five minutes. Nearly, nearly lost that game. They weren't particularly good against Clare when they were beaten down in Cusack Park. They delivered um, a very good display. You'd have well, good a good display against Limerick. It wasn't they weren't unbelievable the same day? They took advantage of um, Limerick's frailties on the day. I'd say more than anything else. But like, I I don't think they've been outstanding or anything either. But yet they've beaten the. Rain in league Munster and All Ireland champions by eight points in a league semi final. So this, you probably put put a fair bit of stock in that, don't you? And they've unearthed a lot of players. When you look at Luke Hogan, had never played league. Jordan Malloy had never played league. Uh, Owen Wall had never played league. Um, you don't know who's going to play. start championship though. Yeah, no, I, I know that. I know that. Mm, um, yeah. You don't know who you don't know who's going to be playing six as well. You're still in that kind of. You're still in that kind of weird kind of situation where you don't know who's going to be playing six and you don't know who's going to be playing midfield. You'd say Jordan Malai and Keith Kenny be playing midfield at the minute, but Shane after, Murphy might make it. Might make uh, it play. Yeah, I think Shane Murphy was probably the big bright spot of the league, wasn't he? Uh, and he looks like he's someone who's versatile that can play anywhere from from probably two to eight. I'd probably give them a B, I'd say, but I I, I don't think it would be any. They haven't been outstanding or anything like that. Far from it. Yeah. So just to go through the results, then two sixteen to sixteen against Wexford the first day out. Then, brilliant start against Cork, but almost got caught by Cork that day down at Parky Cueve, but still nice to win down there, 21 points to 117. Beat, beat Offaly after a dreadful first half, going down by six, ultimately winning by seven. Then they lost to Clare by three points, uh, beat a, you know, poor enough Watford, 219 to 18 points, and then obviously great performance against uh, Limerick. But are we putting too much stock in the, uh, in the Limerick performance? Well, I'm not putting that much stock in it. I just think you have to put some stock in it, but I wouldn't mm. be definitely... Like, I don't think they're near the A category or anything like that. Far from it. They also... Um, I don't know if they rushed TJ back, but he definitely came back earlier than he had before. Now, maybe that's partly to do with the fact that Bally Hale were finished probably, what, last October, and you had to bring him back at some stage and maybe needed less of a break than, than in other years. But... um. I think a B is probably fair. Um, I th- like I th- to me, like Clare have been the team of the league so far, and they've been consistently good the whole way through, while introducing a load of new faces as well. So I think a B is more than fair for Kilkenny. Yeah, I, I I'd agree with you there. So look, the two teams in the league final have the highest rankings here as we go over it. So Clare with the A, Kilkenny with the B. The teams then are on C plus are Limerick and Wexford. A flat C that would be Cork, Offaly, Westmead. C minus Galway, D's for Dublin, Watford, and Antrim. And did I miss Tipperary? C minus as well. So, yeah, folks, get your comments in. If you're not even watching it live, you're watching it later on. Correct us if you think we're wrong. 